ask you about uh, Damien's play yesterday. Uh, he said you give him that look. You better get to that ball because we practice this stuff and that kind of inspired him. Explain that and, and what kind of play was that? Well, it was an incredible play. I think it's uh, I think it's a play that will live in our film room for many years to come because um, it's a winning play. It's a, it's a game that it's a play that can change the complexion of a game and a play like that sends a message, and it's things that we certainly practiced a lot uh, in the fall, leading up to the season, and even early in the season. We've had to back off it a little bit now because of the the, uh, the few number of bodies we have. But I think our guys understand what it takes to win, and, and Damien's play was certainly an example of that. What kind of uh, what kind of message does that send to your team that you, that they're rewarded for hard work to go in to get another top ten road win like that? Um, that you're able to do that. Well, they've stayed connected, and uh, you know this team is resilient. They uh, uh, there's not a lot of panic in that huddle, um, and the, you know they they're pretty even keeled. Uh, obviously, celebrate when some good things happen, but uh, they also have a, have the ability to get to the next play relatively quickly, whether the last play was good or bad, and that's a that's a trait that as coaches we love to see in our guys. Uh, so, you know, this this group uh, has been really unselfish. They moved the basketball, and, uh, you know, we had a lot of guys that contributed to the win last night, and, you know, to go on the road and beat a team like Seton Hall, you have to have a lot of contributions. Okay, in, your, in your opinion, given what he's done now in his maturation on the defense end, but also still maintaining his efficiency and sharpness on offense. Has, he, has Tyshawn, in your opinion, entered the conversation as one of the better two-way players in this league? Boy, he should, you know, like, uh, you know, he should, his, his shooting numbers are good and, um, you know, his defense, he's, I don't know if there's an award for the most improved defensive player, but, uh, like, he's made unbelievable strides. And the guys that he's guarded and, uh, you know, their efficiency when he's guarding them, it, the, those numbers speak for themselves. It's. It'd be one thing if it's an isolated case, but uh, he's guarded some really good players and held them in check. Um, and obviously there's a team defense component that goes with that, but we had the team defense component when Kyrie was here too. But, um, you know, you give that guy that job, uh, which is very, uh, it's very tiring. Yet I expect him to run in transition and be able to rise up and knock down shots and make plays for his teammates. And uh, to Tyshawn's credit, he's been able to do it. You mentioned last night that you, you forgot to mention him at first in the post game. In the room. What, do you remember when you started to take that for granted, when you started to trust him at a level that it's just like expected for him to do? Well, that's the first game I forgot, okay. you know, like because you, 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 you want to praise that type of effort. but. Uh, like it's become such a, uh, a normal thing for him. Like he, he's really bought into it. He, he wants the challenge of guarding the other team's best player, and uh, and, he, and he's executing. You know, like it's Miles Powell is not easy to guard. You, know, you you have to have your antennas up. You always have to be on the lookout for screens. You have to be there in the catch. And he had a play in the second half where he stayed down on a shot fake, cut off a dribble, and then took a charge. I mean, it was about as picture perfect as you could ask. So, uh, you know, he's made really good strides and, and I'm incredibly proud of him. I just have one more, sorry. Uh, what, in your experience coaching guys that have the ability to be impactful on defense and offense, what what does it take for a guy to have that much of an impact on both ends of the floor for as much of a load as he's handling on both ends of the floor? Well, you have to be in great condition, number one, and there, <laughs> and there has to be a mindset. And, and I think Kyrie, I think the mindset was more inherent than it, than it is with Tyshawn. I think Tyshawn has developed it. Uh, and that's, that's pretty cool to see from a coaching perspective that someone could kind of change their outlook on the game and understand the importance of a different part of the game that, uh, that maybe you know, they weren't as good at before, but there, there's an opportunity for growth. And he's, he's taken the bull by the horns and obviously has become a really, really, really good defender for us. The night that Christian had, you know, we talked to him saying, you know, he's playing against bigger dudes, and, and yet he's playing with a chip on his shoulder, he says. He says every night he wants to go out and prove that he can hang. And what did last night show you? Well, he got too much foul trouble yeah. for, 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 to start with. <laughs> After but, that, I, <laughs> but, yeah, right. You know, he made some really good plays on both ends of the floor. You know, he, he uh, you know, he, He's gotten really better at passing the ball and reading some of those back cuts. Uh, in, in, at the start of the year, his assist to turnover ratio was really upside down, and it's 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 it's, it's, it's improved considerably since that point. 
because he's making better decisions with the basketball. It really moves his feet in our ball screen coverage and can get by, behind the defense and, and make some plays at the back of our offense. Got out in transition early in that game uh, and got, got a couple opportunities there. So he's doing what we're asking him to do and uh, you know he's playing the role that we need him to play like a champ. When uh, you're able to play as well as you are without Mitch uh, providing the offensive punch, it, what does that say about your team and, and, and the pieces around it? Well, fortunately, we had five other guys really step up. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I think when one guy's having a rough night, uh, other guys have to step up in his absence. Now, the, the good thing with Mitch is that Mitch impacts the game, whether he's scoring or not. Just the threat of him out there and his movement and his cutting created some of those driving lanes and cutting lanes where we got layups because they're not going to step off of Mitch Ballack. So, um, you know, to have a guy that's that unselfish and is that much about the team is a big reason we are where we are today. What's the key when matching up against the ball? Well, you just we have to we have to get we have to prepare like we prepared for Seton Hall. Uh, DePaul's led virtually the second half of almost every game they played, including at Seton Hall, at Marquette. They led inside of two minutes. Uh, you know, this is a talented, talented basketball team, and uh, they've 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 lost a lot of close games. But from a talent perspective, they're the same team that won by Iowa, at Iowa by 25 and beat Texas Tech at home. So uh, this is a very good basketball team, and you know we're we're going to need our A game. We're going to need a great. We're going to need a great crowd uh, because it, in this league you are just a uh, you can lose three in a row really really quick as a lot of teams have found out and we've been fortunate to avoid that to this point in time and uh, we'll need a great crowd there and, and, a, and a great effort from our team to to make sure we keep this winning going. Nice go difference last night in your mind how were you guys able to go in there and take get away with a win? Mm, just have a lot of fight just have some toughness uh, we know going in that it was a really good team, uh, top 10 in the country, so that's really big for us to get that win and go in there in a hostile environment and get that win. Um, that play, i got to ask you, the one that you go, can you just take me through that play and, and what were you thinking along the line? And, and it, it almost was like when you were turning, you had to make sure you didn't move your feet so yeah. you could travel. I actually tripped. <laughs> I was gonna get a try to go try to run to get a dunk. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But no, nah, um, I just knew like one of those plays. Those are, those are plays we practice in practice every single day with Coach Mack. And uh, I seen Coach Mack right there on the sideline. He had that look in his eyes, like DJ, you better you better dive on this. And so, man, I was I just wanted to dive for it. And it, it was a key. It was key for us because we fed off that. And then I think I believe Marcus got the score. And then we just fed off that and we just went. The look, went on. the look in Mack's eye. Can you explain or give me an example? What's it look? was just it was one of those looks like where. DJ, you know we practice this, so you better get to us. <laughs> so yeah, man, I'm just, I'm just excited, man. We got to win as a team. You, you saw the, the highlight now, right? I'm, I'm guessing. What, yeah, I see. What, what, what does that look like? I mean, you're on the Sports Center top ten and stuff. I mean, what, what goes through your head when you're watching yourself do something? Like that? I was just happy, man, because like those little plays, those little plays like that come down to like winning a, a uh, winning a game. With, with 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 no matter if you win ten points plus ten points or w with one point on the on, on the board, so I mean I was just happy, man. I was just happy, and um, when I seen it, I was just surprised. It was it was actually in the top ten because like a hustle play like that usually not in the top ten. So I was surprised, and it, I felt good. Yeah, we get a feed from CNN. It wasn't even on their highlight, yet, which is strange. But right. uh, ABC had it. On. Yeah. To Paul coming in here, what do you remember about them? Uh, we know that they was tough, and we know we gotta we gotta box out because they got a lot of athletic guys, long guys. And actually, Paul Reed is probably the only one in conference averaging a double double. So we just got to try to keep him off the glass. And they got um, good perimeter shooters with Charlie Moore and uh, Jalen Coleman Lance. So we just gotta we just gotta defend. If we do what we did last game, we should be able to well, add more to what we did last game. We should be good. How do you stay focused? You know, DePaul is a team, you know, it's kind of wedged into a bunch of ranked opponents. How do you stay focused on the task at hand? Uh, just no matter who we play, we want to play everybody like they're a top 10 team. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter if it's DePaul or, or Seton Hall like, or teams like Villanova. So we just want to come in with the same approach even every game and just stay. We know that, that the Seton Hall game is behind us and we just try to get better and just move on from it. Hey, you wear number 23. Why do you wear 23? <laughs> I wear 23 because of Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan is my favorite player, yeah. Do you, do you try to him? You know, growing up, would you try to make his moves and all that stuff? Oh, yeah, of course. Like the fadeaways and things like that. I always try to emulate my game after Michael Jordan. And plus, like, and cause some of the key dunks I try to do, that I think of Michael Jordan. Uh, do you, uh, did you have, ever have to fight for 23? I mean, because, uh, you know, as a young guy, you got to. My gotta... freshman year, my freshman year at New Mexico, I was. I couldn't get number 23 because somebody had it. But like my, on my whole on my visit when I was there, I was just telling him like, "Yo, I gotta get number 23. I gotta. I've been wearing it my whole life." But then obviously he ain't let me get it, so I went to 24.
Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you. Can I first ask you what the post-game celebration was? What, what was that where you're doing something and they stop you and they start you? What is that all about? I mean, it's just like a, a team thing that we do. We mess around. He's like, steal somebody's heart, give it back, something like that. I don't know. Is that so, what it is? Yeah, yeah, Are you yeah. always the one that's in I'm the not world? always the one, but I just happened to be the one last night. All right. Yep. Does, it, does it vary then? Does yeah, I, I feel like everybody knows how to do it, so okay. we just joke around and do it whenever something good happens. How cool is it to do something like that against after a top 10 win? I mean, how, how oh, awesome was a win? It's always great doing something, um, like accomplishing something like that as a team, especially. I guess a great team, like St. Hall is. Uh, we practice a lot every single day, we practice hard for them, right. so whenever it comes together and it works out our way, it feels really good. How did you do it? I mean, what, what worked? I mean, we just stuck to the coach's game plan. We listened to what they had and followed what they said, and uh, by doing that, it helped us prevail. Mm -hmm. The fact that you've been in that environment before and know and all that, do you think it kind of helps that you guys had that experience in a big environment? Yeah, definitely, like you were saying, like uh, with the experience and that playing against Villanova before, uh, Playing Texas Tech when we were in uh, Vegas, it gave us some experience and we knew how to win in that time. Hey, I want to ask you about, like, you know, they're bigger, obviously, they have so yeah. many big dudes. Yeah. Did you, some people would have shied away, but you took the fight to them, especially like, I'm thinking of that uh, one that you had down the lane. Yeah. But is that, was that in your head that you were, you were not going to back down? I mean, you just got to play with a chip on your shoulder. I Like, every single time I play against whoever we play, uh, they're always bigger than I am, and so um, I just got to play with the chip on my shoulder and go hard. How good did that feel? It felt amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you were all over the court last night. I mean, you were really bringing the energy. What kind of got into you last night? I, know, I was just trying to play as hard as I could and do what we could. I know they're a really good team, and so I just want to show everybody that the number in front of your name doesn't protect you. Coach talked about you guys still being able to win the league. To win the regular season. That, that's yeah. a realistic goal in front of you. Is, 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 have you talked about that all year long, or is this just kind of... Yeah, we've been talking about it all year long, but we've just been trying to take it one game at a time. Um, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves or anything like that, so we're just trying to focus on our next game and get that W. Yeah, how do you maintain that level of play when DePaul, who on paper is a team that you guys probably should take care of? I mean, we just got to stay focused. By staying focused, it'll keep us uh, engaged in what we got to do in, in our game plan, and then We'll see how uh, the results carry. What do you remember about Paul specifically? Uh, they're a good team, a uh, big team for sure. They play hard and they, they play about seven, eight guys that might be playing more this time. They I know they got their big guy back, so we just got to figure out how we're going to play against them and see how that goes. Cool. Thank you, sir. Bye.